Hello everyone and welcome to one of the coolest games of 2023. SGS NATO's Nightmare is one of the best grand scale Cold War war games out there and my favorite at the moment for sure and it's really the scratching the itch on the waiting for Warno's Army General as this game is really hitting it home. It is featuring a lot of cool mechanics. It is a pretty basic war game in when it comes to the fights on the battlefield, but it has some nice replayability mechanics with its card system, and yeah. It also features a good couple of game modes, as it has the big grand scale European campaign, and it has two four versions of it, an advanced and a an basic game. The basic game basically being the vision scale, whilst advanced scale being down to the regiment level, where you have single artillery formations and batteries and seed plane formations and so on as well to manage which is really really cool and yeah you also have some smaller scenarios with Norfolk, Santac and the push towards Munich as the smallest of the scenarios for playing all the game. You can play it versus the AI on either side and you can play it hot seat or play by email versus other players. So this is really cool. And yeah, let's jump into how the game exactly looks like. And this is the massive map that all of this is happening on. From Denmark down to Austria and France, Belgium, Netherlands, all represented as well. But obviously mostly all of Germany here, uh, where most of the action is going to happen. If you invade Austria, you can make it a bit in the south as well. And yeah, you have all the nations involved here of the pact that would be involved Poland, Czechoslovakia, Slovakia, Hungary if you want to activate them and obviously East Germany and a lot of Soviet Union forces on the other side. We have a lot of nations as well as you can see here all of these nations have or can have some active forces on the battlefield which is quite interesting and the way all of this starts and the uh, special system that makes SGS also quite different from other wargames is their card system, which allows you to basically make this kind of a sandbox. And you can create your own scenarios, basically, with this at the get-go and also whilst the game going on. Cards are a super important and vital part of this game. A lot of them influence what you can do in a turn. The beginning, it also sets up what you have to your propo uh, proposal in general and then some also influence the combat directly so what we have here are mostly cards that affect what we have at the beginning for example and all of them you pay with victory points so with paying uh, uh, paying with victory points you also make it harder for you to win but you also make it easier to get there basically so it's kind of a how deep do you want to push and how much do you want to spend for that kind of scenario if you, for example, say you want to get Czechoslovakia prepared, then that gives you more income, that gives you, it gives the Czechoslovaks basically more forces, more reinforcements, but it costs you 20 victory points, which you will have to earn back, and it also increases nuclear tension, which is something that you will have an eye, have to have an eye on as well. You can also use nuclear weapons, you can use chemical weapons if you want to as well, and all of this you can set up here, Polish mobilization uh, is... German mobilization and so on. You can choose which nations you want to mobilize there. If you want to spend all 200 victory points, you can do that. But then you have to push quite deep into East, uh, into West Germany as well, especially if NATO decides to not spend any of their points. But then they are obviously also a lot weaker, as they can also choose stuff like modernization. Uh, you can, for example, also say that we create a scenario where the Soviet Union says it's doomed anyway, it has to push deep. Then you get more victory points, but so does NATO, so you can spend more points then. And where you can then, for example, say joint command, making your command formations more flexible, which you can do for these Germans and for the rest of the pact nations as well. And then, for example, if you go on, you also can spend this. You can't have too many hind cards, Let's, uh, but at the end of the turn, of turn one, you for example also can choose things like yeah, you get reinforcements here, and then in the end you can also for example choose pack modernization, which gets all your weapons up from 
1985 level up to 1989 level, basically. The T55s become T55AM2s, uh, AMs here, for example. So, really, really strong. With the Soviets, you can do the same. And then you get all your jets here. Upgraded all your uh, a lot of your jets, a lot of your tanks, and your T-64s, and so on, become higher level jets. SU-24s, for example, being pushed further to the front line. More MiG-23s, MiG-29s making it to the front line in quite a quantity then. Uh, instead of really low numbers in 1985. T-80s coming around in better versions, T-80BVs and so on, making it to the front line. So giving all your forces stronger combat capabilities, but also making it a lot harder for you because you pay a lot of victory points and you pay with income and so on as well. So all of these cards have some nice advantages, but they don't ever come for free. And that is really the cool part about this. You really have to do the, uh, do the combat then um, with the units that you have set up and get deep, create your own scenario. And the NATO will do the same. Yes, if we have a look now over to the other side, uh, the NATO player can now see what the pack player cho uh, did choose. Um, we most of the time see what the enemy did play for cards. Uh, there's only a couple that get fully hidden. And then NATO can do the same thing here as they also see it whole lot of stuff in general and yeah all this is turn one explanation stuff we'll also have some world events going on here uh, but yeah nato for example can mobilize their american go for more massive monetization of us forces for example then all the m1s abrams become m1a1s and so on so this is a really really cool system and this for sure adds a lot to the replayability of this game and with only 15 turns, it also doesn't take forever. It's rather complex, but it's not overly complex. And yeah, this system plus world events, like for example, uh, invasion of Turkey going on, um, Korean War can break out again. All of those have influence on the battlefield as well. Battle of the Atlantic, maybe some action in the Indian Ocean, and all of that can happen as special events that can go either way for NATO or Pact. So that is pretty cool as well. Uh, adds some random but quite interesting scenarios for the rest of the battlefield as well changes your income changes the victory points for each side so you never quite know where you stand because those events can happen though they the massive part of the action and the size of factors happen on the battlefield here in europe and yeah the game outside of the first round this is basically was basically is basically round zero is then situated in classic turn phase where you have uh, reinforcements, you have air bomb, uh, air battles, you have uh, land battles, and so on. So, yeah, we're gonna have a look now into the action and how the battles look like. And for the battle part, we're gonna go into the small scenario here. I already did move my air forces here, for example, around. Part of them have moved to Munich. And now we're gonna move our land forces here. For example, this combined arm force here with the third guards tank division and a good couple of extra formations here as well the 98 uh, 8th vdv division as well which has already taken some losses here in this scenario and those guys gonna try to push into the german forces over here we're gonna move a couple of these guys into the fight as well can split them up can move them over here as well to really overwhelm these German forces on the front line. And break through that pretty weak formation. You never quite see, there's always a quite good fog of war. The game never goes, uh, like it, it gives you a good amount of information, like obviously you have some stats and so on. It really stops you from getting analysis paralysis though, because about, and has a nice interesting amount of fog of war because you never quite see what is in the enemy formations like you unless you have some uh, satellites or so on then you can spy exactly what is in the stack outside of that you just see the basic outlier here so for example this is an infantry formation with some boxes there some tank divisions uh, tank formations here but you never quite know how strong they exactly are or nearly never you have some options sometimes there's also a stacking limit on 
uh, zones, obviously. So you can't endlessly move units into one spot, into one hex. Um, and yeah, let's have the action here now and see how the battle plays out. And for that, you can uh, then always have this battle list of where fights are drawn. You can decide which one you want to activate first. That can be interesting for cards to be played. We, for example, played one morale card already. That is already in action. And then we now here have our air versus ground battle with our air from units attack, trying to attack the enemy ground units here. We had our seed planes trying to hit the enemy air defense. They did some fire there. And then you can see there's a lot of battle action going on. A lot of different turns here. Uh, sh sh uh, short air defense. And then start of the battle with the full turn. So, yeah, cask here trying to come in. It's all based on the D20 system. You have attack rolls, you have defense rolls, depending on the base stats. These things can be different. And then in ground battles, we also can, for example, play other cards. And yeah, packed fires first in this battle is, for example, something that this card can activate. Uh, there are some defensive cards as well. Those will be played automatically by the AI, not by the defense, uh, defending player, because they, you, obviously only one player can see at a time as it's turn, uh, turn by turn. And yeah, we now achieved a breakthrough, so we can now choose to move over here for one more attack. And yeah, here we, for example, now could play this uh, shooting first thing and really try to defend, uh, defeat the Germans even harder here, the 10th Panzer Division. Our chemical warfare unit here firing now, a shock and ore face. We hit the enemy really hard. Enemy takes heavy casualties. Some of the units are broken. And the rest tries to fight on. But we obviously have overwhelming firepower in this scenario here. And we will get a lot of damage done. And as you can see, a lot of die rolls. We just defeat the Panzer Krippe uh, over here. But this one here, Defensive Kampfgruppe, is still trying to fight on. But. Obviously, it is heavily outnumbered, and it should be defeated quite easily here now. And we have one formation broken, two formation beaten, and in the pursuit uh, phase, we might now destroy the 10th Panzer Division completely. And there we go. Complete, overwhelming, packed victory. And we now can potentially do a breakthrough as well. Move on to Lansud. And we're off action there. So, yeah, this is how the combat looks like. And it's rather simple. As, and as I said, like you have all this, you have a lot of uh, simple stats to kind of get what is going on, but it keeps you from analysis paralysis, as said before, by just not letting you go too deep into the stats. Uh, and that way, also has a nice fog of war. You don't, ha you can play this game relatively quickly, thanks to the 15 turns and so on. It's still a complicated, uh, complex game. Uh, in the end, here we get some victory points as well. Um, for these victories, that is the summary here in the end. But it's luckily not a complete stats monster, like for example a Gary Crixby game or so on, meaning that you can't finish one of these battles uh, or one of these campaigns, even the big campaign, like within 15, 20 hours of playtime for your side instead of 200, 300 hours of playtime. So you can play quite a lot of these act, uh, battles as well um, as one of the turns, depending on the size you take can take between 20 to one hour and a half uh 20 minutes to one hour and a half so really nice system um and yeah easy to learn in my eyes as well hard to master though on the high level especially on the when you have seat and so on to manage there is a lot of choices to be made and yeah the one disadvantage in the multiplayer is that it is a pretty outdated play by email system you have to send the enemy your file by via email or directly via Discord or so, and send them the save file, and they have to unpack it then. Um, it's not super complicated, but it is a bit of an extra step between each turn, which is somewhat frustrating. Uh, but outside of this, this game really is fantastic. And yeah, we're gonna go into a play-by-email game against XTRG on th this uh, channel here as well. So if you wanna see this game in hot action and the full playthrough of it, we're gonna go in there. We're gonna play NATO. XTRG is going to play packed, so I hope you all 
hyped for that. And yeah, let me know down below if you are interested in this kind of game and what you think about Nato's Nightmare. What other kind of games like this are you playing? And yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye and have a great day.